I have to start off this review by mentioning that I didn't deliberately set it up that I played the Turing test right after Observation, the game I reviewed in my last video. I mostly don't play games in a specific order unless I do so for a project that involves analyzing those games at the same time, like I did for my look at survival games and my Tony Hawk retrospective. It just so happened that both Observation and the Turing test share a number of similarities. Both games are set in outer space, or at least in the Turing test's case not on Earth. They're both first-person puzzle games and they both feature the theme of artificial intelligence and their respective sentience. Last time I went into a bit of a lengthy tangent regarding 2001 A Space Odyssey and the fairly obvious influences that Observation drew from that movie. But don't be concerned, this time around I'll mostly stick with the game itself. Because even though superficially there are a few similarities between the games, thematically and also from a gameplay perspective they're quite different from each other. The Turing test is actually closer to Portal in terms of gameplay. Every level is a self-contained puzzle. Each chapter of the game introduces a new puzzle mechanic and each puzzle in any given chapter builds upon this new mechanic and how it integrates with all the previous ones. The main puzzle mechanic in the Turing test is based on simple switch logic. You can find a bunch of sockets around the levels that turn something on or off or open and close doors depending on the state of their sockets. You can either slot in a physical block that powers the socket, which requires direct physical access, or you can use your gun to collect up the three energy spheres and insert them into the sockets from any distance. The nature of those spheres evolves over time, so you also get spheres that turn on and off in regular intervals, as well as a type of sphere that acts like a battery that basically discharges over time once after it gets inserted into a socket. The gameplay in general is pretty alright, though the puzzles are overall fairly simple. It's not breaking any new ground and it follows typical puzzle game convention to a T. I like the restraint the developers exercised here in not going overboard with all the available mechanics. I've seen many games fall into the trap where they introduce a handful of mechanics and then try to apply every single one with ever increasing complexity, to the point where it becomes impossible to keep track of the state of any given level or even formulate a plan of attack in order to solve it. The game also has this weird fixation with giving you the ability to examine a ton of random objects around the levels that as far as I can tell serve absolutely no purpose. They're not used to solve any of the switch puzzles and it's just weird how the game even allows you to pick up all these objects. If I'd have to hazard a guess, I would assume that this is some kind of vestigial leftover from when the game actually did require examining all these objects from any angle for its puzzles, but this aspect has probably been scrapped at some point. What saves the game from mere mediocrity, however, is its narrative and its themes. You play as Ava Turing. Yeah, it's not that creative to name your main character after a famous scientist and also a thought experiment named after them. The name bears no significance in the story itself, as far as I can tell. Anyway, you are woken up by Tom, the artificial intelligence that assists a team of the International Space Agency on their mission on Europa, an icy moon orbiting the planet Jupiter. When Ava gets woken up from her cryo slumber, Tom mentions to her that the rest of the crew are in danger after encountering an extraterrestrial organism. And that's basically all the setup you get. Once you arrive on the surface of Europa and enter the ISA compound, it's noted that it has changed somewhat since Tom has last had access to it, which basically serves as a justification for all these test chambers existing. As Tom states it, these chambers serve as a Turing test. That basically makes it impossible for him to solve them, because as an AI, he lacks the necessary abilities of the human mind for creativity, which would enable the lateral thinking necessary to solve the problems. Now I contest that specific claim here, because the majority of the puzzles don't really require lateral thinking at all. Most of the puzzles can be solved with pretty standard logical thinking, because they explicitly follow the intended rule set of the game. You have a set of sockets and the corresponding power blocks or spheres that enable you to solve all the puzzles. This requires strict logic to the point where I'd even say that an AI could easily solve them even through the most uncreative brute force approach. The number of possible combinations is so small that I doubt it'd take any decently specced computer these days longer than a couple of seconds, never mind the probable future computers of whenever this game is set in. That's not to say that lateral thinking never makes an appearance, though ironically it even gets discouraged at times. At one point, for example, a solution to a puzzle requires you to use the aforementioned energy block to keep a door from shutting all the way, so you can power off the door and still interact with what's behind it by peeking through the remaining opening at the right angle. That's all fine and dandy. However, I tried a similar thing in an earlier puzzle with a door that closes horizontally, and there the solution wouldn't work. So while lateral thinking is required to solve a few of the puzzles, it's actively discouraged in most other instances. So why does the game even insist on highlighting lateral thinking in the first place? Well, the Turing test is not just a fancy name for the game, it has actual meaning. It's a thought experiment invented by Alan Turing, a pioneer of early computer science, and it describes a setting where an interrogator poses questions to a human and a machine in order 
order to determine which is which. If the interrogator can't conclude that either of them was the machine, Turing argues that this would be proof that machines can think, since they've managed to exhibit enough human behavior to fool us. But the game doesn't just stop at the Turing test. It also introduces a common rebuttal to the Turing test, which is the Chinese room thought experiment proposed by John Searle. The Chinese room experiment argues that a machine following a program that would allow it to give all the right outputs to all the inputs it receives does not prove that the machine is actually capable of what we call human thought. Even though it processes all the inputs, it doesn't understand anything that happens in the way we humans intuit understanding. The example Searle gives in the Chinese room experiment is that we should imagine a room with a person in it. The person receives inputs written as Chinese characters. It's also important to note that the person in the room doesn't understand Chinese at all, to them these symbols carry no meaning. The person has a rule book that describes to them what types of outputs they have to produce for any given input, and these outputs also have to be written as Chinese characters. According to Searle, this is the same thing as feeding the same inputs into a computer and the computer spitting out the appropriate responses. All that changes is who executes the algorithm. So the question then is, does the person in the room understand Chinese? After all, they produce the appropriate outputs that could fool a native Chinese speaker of the person's supposed ability to understand Chinese. If no, then the computer doesn't understand Chinese either, so by any metric, Searle argues, computers are incapable of understanding. Now I'm not going to go much further into the topic of AI consciousness here, even though it is a fascinating topic that you can lose many hours over reading arguments for or against both the Turing test and the Chinese room thought experiment. If you want my personal take on it, I believe Searle greatly overestimates what the terms mind, consciousness and understanding mean and that his experiment doesn't prove that machines can't think. He also presupposes that any of those terms relate to an extant concept to begin with, without ever proving that assertion. Maybe the person doesn't understand Chinese, but the algorithm certainly does. After all, a corpse of a Chinese person also doesn't understand Chinese, it's what's inside that does. To me, the Chinese room thought experiment is more an explanation of why we humans are actually not capable of free will and that we are only mere machines that on a very basic level react to outside inputs with certain predetermined responses that on a macroscopic scale ends up coming together as a human person. But to engage in a broad explanation of why I believe that would definitely go beyond the scope of this review of a video game. Still, I like the fact that the game tries to incorporate these concepts and ideas into a video game. It's just unfortunate that nothing substantial ever arises out of it. After a couple of chapters, the game actually states that the supposed dangerous organism they encountered on Europa isn't that easily vilified. It's an organism that would allow humans to stop the aging process and cure all sorts of diseases related to aging. But it would also lend itself to creating other diseases with the same resistance to dying, which is where the game draws its moral conflict from. There's an excited back and forth between Ava and Tom about how they interpret the events on Europa and what the eventual solution should be. And that includes many instances of the crew on Europa accusing Tom of not being able to think or feel, which serves as an easy way to dismiss Tom's concerns. I find it especially poetic when Tom vehemently argues against human immortality while at the end of the game stating that it doesn't want to die once Ava turns it off. It's just a shame that this exchange of ideas is mostly relegated to a few lines spoken between characters at the start of each level. And the most fascinating background information is actually hidden in the optional levels, so it's very much worth it to solve those as well, even though they do sometimes deviate from the typical levels quite a bit. But the gameplay itself is just a simple puzzle that mostly only serves as a vehicle to transport the story and give it a certain pacing. The puzzles don't tell you anything about the relationship between humans, machines, thinking and feeling. Now I stress that this isn't a deal breaker. It's fine for a game to be just about a few puzzles and offer an entertaining narrative besides its gameplay. I like the previously covered the Talos principle for similar reasons, even though it too exhibits the same divide between story and gameplay. I like that the Turing test engages in a philosophical debate about AI consciousness with nuance and without making absolute statements of whatever the developers might believe the answer to be. But at the end of the day, the most interesting facet of the Turing test, the game, not the thought experiment, is the discussion surrounding AI consciousness and not the puzzle gameplay. If you wanted to, you could just as well play through the levels here and never spare a thought for the game's actual themes. And I think that this is where the game ultimately stumbles a bit. It doesn't meaningfully integrate its gameplay into its intended narrative. That doesn't make it a bad game, far from it. I had fun with the puzzles, but it ultimately makes it shallower than it could have been.